We're here today in this uh, grand building, which is the uh, British Foreign Office to commemorate International Holocaust Memorial Day. And we're also recording the uh, official memorial service for the Holocaust in which over six million precious Jewish lives were murdered at the hands of the Nazis on an industrial scale. This will also follow some very important and significant interviews with this, some of the key speakers of this Memorial Day. Now you are one of the leading experts, if not one of the world's experts on the Holocaust. Um, and you gave a very passionate speech today about the Holocaust and why the Holocaust happened. Um, in a time when we are having so much Holocaust education, so many books are being written about the Holocaust, so many movies about the Holocaust, why are we seeing such an escalation in Jew hatred around the world, despite the education that we're seeing in our universities and governments? Well, I don't think there's a necessary connection between um, Holocaust education and the decrease or increase in anti-Semitism. Uh, anti-Semitism is a product of uh, both of contemporary issues, but also of a very deep-seated uh, unease about the Jews in uh, monotheistic societies, in other words, Christianity and Islam. There has never been any anti-Semitism in polytheistic societies, despite the presence of quite a large number of Jews there, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, so um, the increase in, um, in popular anti-Semitism is one thing. There's actually a decrease in physical attacks on Jews in 2016 compared to 2015 and 14. But there's an increase in the violence of the fewer in uh, 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 cases of, of violence. So the violence is, is more marked, the number is decreased. Now this is a temporary thing, it'll go up, it'll go down. And even if there is a settlement in, um, between Israelis and Palestinians, anti-Semitism is not going to disappear because it is not really dependent only on temporary issues, even if temporary issues take a very long time to solve. Sir Eric Pickles, it's an absolute pleasure that uh, I'm joining you here in the uh, Foreign Office on a special occasion to mark the 70 sec 72nd uh, anniversary of the liberation of the uh, Nazi death camp known as Auschwitz, which is also International Holocaust Memorial Day. Now, you have a special role and a special task being the Prime Minister's special envoy for post-Holocaust issues. Um, you've been in this position a couple of years now. What is one of the major issues that you've actually learned when it comes to dealing with the issue of anti-Semitism? Well, I think there is the, uh, it's the growth of anti-Semitism. I think there's a, um, uh, there is a shadow creeping across uh, Europe and I think it's been a problem that's occurred in plain sight and that governments uh, across Europe have not known really what to do and that's why the International Holocaust uh, Remembrance Alliance definition of modern anti-Semitism is so important. Uh, Jonathan Arkush, it's an absolute pleasure to be interviewing you here in the uh, British Foreign Office um, as we remember 72 years since the liberation of Auschwitz, known as International Holocaust Memorial Day. Now, you are president of the Board of Deputies. Can you explain to our viewers what your role is and the important work being carried out by the Board of Deputies? 
Yes, thank you, Simon. The Board of Deputies was founded in 1760, and for 257 years, without a break, it has been the national representative body for the British Jewish community. So we span the whole length and breadth of the community, uh, from orthodox to secular, from left wing to right wing, from people care about Israel to people for whom it's not a big part of their everyday existence. Every significant congregation, every significant Jewish organisation in the United Kingdom, all over the United Kingdom, from the southwest to the north of Scotland, sends a representative elected to the Board of Deputies. So it's a British Jewish Parliament, it's democratically legitimate and therefore accountable, and they elect officers like me. Fantastic. And you have a unique role with the British government, don't you? Raising issues of concern from the Jewish community to the British government. Are you effectively the liaison uh, body within the Jewish community that is representative on behalf of the Jewish community to the British government? Yes. Uh, the government and the public square generally would rightly regard the Board of Deputies as the address of British Jews. We would be the natural first point of call on consultation, on legislation and taking the temperature of our community, wanting to know our views. Of course, we're not experts on everything. So if, for example, we need to be talking to the government about, say, social care, I will bring in one of our uh, outstanding social welfare organisations like Jewish Care, I would take them with me or in place of me. But yes, you're absolutely right. We would be the first point of contact. But Theresa May, your, our Prime Minister, deserves a lot of credit and the British government deserves a lot of credit um, for, for de redefining anti-Semitism and working on the new definition of, of anti-Semitism that really states that, for example, if you say that Israel has no right to exist, this is anti-Semitic. And if you say that Israel is a racist state, this is also anti-Semitic. Um, why is the government taking this lead and why are other countries, including the European Union, very slow to follow Britain's lead in confronting Jew hatred? Well, we, we got it through uh, in April in the International Alliance. Um, uh, we adopted it ourselves in this country uh, just before Christmas. I've been talking to some um, ambassadors outside. They're planning to move this, this forward. And I think the, the preaching is this, that people say, actually, we want a, a holistic approach. We want to uh, treat uh, um, uh, hatred against Muslims and uh, Jewish people and Christians the same, which absolutely is right. But there is no reason why it has to be all together. I think there is special circumstances with, with regard to anti-Semitism. I want to see uh, uh, that we deal with um, anti-Muslim um, uh, propaganda as well. And I think what we found in dealing with anti-Semitism, an awful lot of Jewish organisations have been very helpful to Muslim organisations. And I think we need to move things along. I, but I don't think we can, we can afford to operate in the slowest member of the convoy to get everything together because of this. That holistic approach has failed. It has spectacularly failed. And clinging to it as an excuse that we want everything together is just clinging uh, to, to failure. So that's why I think uh, it's important that we, uh, that we do this. Um, but I'm offended that, that um, uh, Jewish uh, uh, people in this country should feel any fit going to the shops. And I have to say, I'm equally outraged uh, that Muslim women should be worried about uh, uh, going to the shop, be worried that someone's going to pull off their scars, be worried that people are going to say unpleasant things. The Jewish community, the Muslim community, uh, and other uh, uh, minorities in this country are welcome and they are part of our national identity and without them we would be the worst and it's our duty to protect, to reassure and to allow those communities to flourish. And when it comes down to the, um, the issue of anti-Semitism uh, and, and maybe this is something that Western governments are afraid to deal with and, and that's the fact that the most <coughs> violent attacks on Jewish communities in Europe um, comes from Islamic extremists and there is a fear about confronting them because of political correctness. <coughs> um, yeah. How do governments get around this issue and actually I deal with that, the, this yeah, the, problem? The, uh, 
The violent attacks on the Jews, as I said before, there's, the violence is harsher and the number of violent incidents is smaller. And the Islamic radicals who are usually the perpetrators, perpetrators of this, a very small minority among the Muslims in, in, in European countries and elsewhere. Now, <clears throat> the only way to fight this is to uh, create an alliance with the vast majority of Muslims who are against the radicals. For instance, there was a meeting in January of last year in Marrakesh, in Morocco, of hundreds of uh, Muslim clerics in order to make a, prepare a declaration, a public declaration, against Islamic radicalism. Now, no paper in the United Kingdom or in America or in Israel even reported on this. Now, what we need to do is to create an alliance with those people against the radicals who are not only murderers, who are not only anti-Jewish, they are anti-liberal, anti-West, anti-every tradition that we want to perpetuate in democratic society. What role can our viewers play in confronting the rise of anti-Semitism? And what role can British citizens play in stamping out this evil? Because we, we heard today in the, the memorial service that what starts with the Jews never finishes with the Jews. And we know that this brings destruction upon our society, upon Western civilization. Don't tolerate it. Don't tolerate it. Uh, uh, you know, the road to the gas chambers of, uh, of Auschwitz and the death camps are taken by small, tiny steps. The first stage is to see a person primarily as a Jew, not as a British citizen. Next stage is to make jokes. Make, we've all heard Jewish jokes as we grew up. What you've got to do is to be very un-English, very un-British, very un-Scots, and say to the person who cracks that joke, that's offensive and I don't find that funny. That's as small as you can do. The second thing you can do is if uh, you live in a community where there are people of different religions, make them feel welcome. The third thing you can do is where you see incidents of anti-Semitism or, anti or, or race <coughs> hatred, report it to the police. Well, number one, care, and I know how much your viewers, many of them do care, and I want to express, on behalf of the Jewish community, our very heartfelt appreciation for that care and commitment. There aren't enough of you out there. So, secondly, tell your friends, tell your churches, stand up if you see injustice, including prejudice, which is unjust, against Israel. Wise up, read up, and speak up, and that would be an excellent thing to do. And thirdly, write to your members of parliament. Members of parliament tell me, here in Westminster, that they literally weigh the post bag they get. The truth is, is that more people are writing to condemn Israel to members of parliament than to support Israel. We need to redress that balance. That's partly because the Jewish community is a very small community. But with the help of our fantastic Christian friends, you can redress that balance because you have the numbers that our small and rather beleaguered community doesn't have. Um, my final uh, question to uh, Yehuda. It's uh, 72 years since the liberation of Auschwitz by, um, by Soviet forces. Um, what are the lessons from the Holocaust and what can we learn 72 years on about the evil that is anti-Semitism? Well, uh, the Holocaust is the paradigmatic genocide because it's the most extreme form of that particular pathology. Uh, it, the Holocaust is uh, uh, unprecedented for a number of reasons. Uh, the two major ones are, first of all, that it was global in intent. The Nazis intended to murder all the Jews in the world, and that is for the first time in history. The second is that, contrary to all other genocides, the genocide of the Jews was anti-pragmatic. 
There was no uh, economic or military or political reasons to do that, purely ideological. And that, again, has no precedent in, in history. And that is being understood more intuitively than intellectually uh, by large parts of the Western world. You have in Britain, you have the Imperial War Museum, you have Beit Shalom in the north of England. Uh, the governments, whether Labour or Conservative, or with the liberals, uh, they, they certainly recognize this. Now, they are, of course, anti-Semites in the United Kingdom, like they are anywhere else. Uh, the same applies to the United States and other countries. So, uh, the question is not the recognition of this. The question is what you do about it. And uh, part of the answer, of course, is education. But another part is the uh, fight against the anti-Semitism and the Holocaust denial in the media, in the mass media. Facebook and Twitter and so on have become the main enemies of a liberal democracy. Whichever interpretation you give to that, those terms, whether it's conservatives or social democrats or liberals, the, the danger lies in the social media. And they have to be, that can only be uh, fought by an international agreement, and that is extremely difficult to achieve because you also have to uh, protect free speech. So there's a clash there, and in order to get out of this, you need international agreement. That is where the governments are important, where parliaments are important, where the Christian churches are very important.